Hi, welcome to Art Show. I'm Craig Stover, and today I have with me Tom Judd. Hey, Tom, how are you? Hey, good to see you, Craig. Great to see you. As uh, always, I'd like to just start off. I'm going to share my screen uh, for those people who don't know your work. Uh, it's always great to get a couple of images of yours out in front of them. Um, so I, I went to your, your site and I selected, so you have no idea what I, I selected. I have no idea. Yeah. Right. But I thought you would uh, like to see this. Um, this one I just thought was uh, a fascinating uh, composition. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, do you want me to comment on it or just? If you have anything to say, sure. I'm sure. Um, yeah. Great. This was a series I did a couple of years ago and where I combined statues um like I, I would go to the museum or go to to the pennsylvania academy and i would take pictures of their portraits mm -hmm. statues all kinds of stuff because i just i'm very interested in 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 how different that work is compared to contemporary work so i like to take those pieces and use them in a contemporary fashion so this that particular statue is from the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, and um, <clears throat> that's you know I just basically took the picture, and then I combined it with wallpaper and different things, and um, it, basically they're collage, obviously. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, I I liked it because of the sort of the double landscape, you know, the collage, yeah. the, the wallpaper itself is like a figure ground, but then you've got it in the background as well. I was like, yep. that was a good piece. I, I like that one. Thank you. Thank you. And a lot of people will recognize this. Yeah. And how big is this piece? This is pretty big. This is like six by five feet kind of size. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. Was... It's, it's pretty good size. And I did a whole series mm -hmm. of what I call disaster paintings. Things, you know, like houses getting flooded and you know, when we were having the the, the big, uh, I can't remember which the name of the flood, the one that flooded New York. And uh, anyway, and I, so I did a whole series of buildings getting destroyed, mm -hmm. uh, bridges falling down. And I still am very fascinated by that stuff. And this, oh, yeah. this I found a picture of, and I loved it because uh, basically the roller coaster is just literally, I drew it with a paint i mean i drew it out with you know a pencil but then it's basically just a dark brown paint over the landscape or top yeah any callback to uh warhol's disasters as soon as you started saying you know what it's series. funny I, I i i i would love to say yes but it actually wasn't for some reason. I'm not sure why it wasn't. <laughs> well, lots. Of, I think lots of artists do disaster pictures. Yeah, you know. Uh, but and I love it. I yeah. like. I think that is the best stuff he ever did. Yeah, I would agree. So, speaking of best stuff, this one really caught my eye. Uh, I, okay. uh, again, I know it's another collage piece. Yes. Uh, but I think yeah. it just it just works so well. Thank you, thank you. So what is this is, is I did a whole series called Myth of the Frontier, which was playing off of how we think of the, 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 the West and how it was settled. And the truth of the matter is it was kind of a really bloody mess. And, uh, you know, there's just a lot of contradictions about how we see our history and what actually happened. So I did a bunch of things where I combined like his torso is a white mm -hmm. you know, gentleman. And then I put his face on it. And I, I did a lot of that where I combined bodies with faces. Um, I did a lot of uh, transgender stuff to get, because to sort of make fun of the macho cowboy thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'd have like Gary Cooper with a dress on and <laughs> just, just goofy stuff like that. I mean, I had a lot of fun with it, but, but yeah, this one, I really like a lot. This series was it. I'd spent a lot of time to select, you know, that's great. I could have selected yeah, I, more I, than one, but I, I went with that one. And this one, I just, this one struck me. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I love the, the blue. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that's such a, such a wonderful, rich color. Thank you. I it's funny. I I love that blue. I do. 
I've used for some reason, well, I guess because I love it, uh, I've used that blue or, or some version. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Sorry about that. That's All okay. Right. Things happen. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, okay. That is the famous, um, now I'm forgetting the name of the house. Um, it's a museum. That, it's, what is, is it? The, the glass house? Yeah, no, it's called the, oh God. Anyway, it's outside of Chicago. Very famous okay. house. I, did I like several, the, yeah, go the, ahead. Where, the places where you used uh, a, a slightly uh different shade of that blue to like make corrections exactly, exactly. <laughs> i really enjoy that like you're you know, make i'm correcting it but you're still going to know about it so i'm going to put a little bit more in you know what it's funny to say that because <laughs> one i call it bad patch jobs oh yeah. yeah and i love you know when you're you're driving down the street and they've there's a side of a building and it's like tan or green and then uh -huh. somebody's patched it with right. a that is not even close and I, right. it always cracks me up like, <laughs> you know it's sort of like it's just anyway but that's the beauty of it right and even like when they patch potholes in the street and it doesn't match right. the original asphalt but exactly yeah. it's but i do i purposefully like i said i do what i call bad patch jobs yeah and, and also i like the expedient quality of it it's right. like, oh, it's blue. I'll just use this blue. You know, like, <laughs> it's that, I like that attitude. I, um, I think you're in my head because I do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, like really expedient. Yeah, just like, Whenever you know, I do something really scratch it out. And, you know, if, yeah. if you don't like what I did, oh, well, look, you know, keep oh, going. Oh, well, what the hell? You <laughs> right. know, and, like a really uh, obvious pet, a patch job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Book covers. Book. Yeah. Um, so I love this one, especially because, you know, it's very hard online to get scale yes. uh, with, with a lot of art. But this one, you know, you can really see the the books, the feeling of it, the scale of it. I thought this was great how you use them uh, over to get. How did you bind the books behind? Was it like a glue in a canvas or something yeah, else? Yeah, they're, they're glued to a piece of like just plywood or yeah, yeah. something like that panel wood panel um and i basically just glued them on yeah oh this one yeah yeah and i just like you know this one also is just it's a wonderful painting yeah uh, it's a painter's painting i think yeah, really you know, exactly really yeah good. it's got that it's not a foreground it's it's almost like it's an in your face foreground right uh -huh. it's like i'm seeing spots in front of my eyes but then there's the regular yeah space behind it yeah, and they're all, uh, you know, and it's they're painted very, again, very quickly, and uh, they have a, some texture to them. They've got <clears throat> some of them I like to play around with. Sometimes I'll drip thinner uh -huh. over them to take, and when you do that, it just pulls the paint off and, and leaves these these interesting little you know, textured drip marks coming through the, so it feels like it's kind of somebody left it out in the rain kind of feeling. And just for our folks at home, you were, these are made with oil. These right? are, this, this, this particular one is oil. I do yeah. work in acrylic occasionally. I mm -hmm. sometimes will do the backgrounds in acrylic and then do the mm -hmm. foregrounds mm -hmm. in oil. But oil is my favorite in terms of, when I'm really getting into the painting of it, right. I just think oil is 10 times more, um, mysterious it's when you just, paint with oils do you have a medium um that you prefer do you make a text uh, a, a specific recipe or do you just use straight linseed or thinner or i don't i'm very loosey-goosey about all that i, I <laughs> you know i have paint thinner i have some oil uh -huh. i have some varnish and then i I just yeah let it let it rip the mix and mash I like that it's mix it's a, yeah the the combo is great so I also wanted to you know work on paper I think is yes. extremely important and valid and uh, yes. this one I thought was just wonderful you know you've used these divers yes in a number of pieces but this one uh, oh, I found it so funny because he's so above exactly. the tree you know art with humor is great <laughs> exactly and just you know. Um, 
You know, and I, I just got this and it just, just, just flew into my mind. I think I got like the funniness of him flying above the trees. It's the kind of thing that early Hockney did. Mm. Like, mm. The early David Hockney. Like the uh, elephant squishing ants, yeah. that kind of. Yeah, yeah, and the weird proportion. And and then people are kind of awkwardly right. <laughs> floating away. Those are my favorite Hockney paintings. Of, you know? Yeah, I can definitely yeah. see that. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of painting, I also wanted to shift and show that you have prints that you do. I do. Uh, I do prints. So this, how, how, what kind of a print is this? Well, basically, it's just a very high, high, you know, uh, high, I was going to say high res, but it's not really high res, but it's, well, yeah, it's a high, it's made from high, high red, high res file mm -hmm. uh, scan where they basically, they take the piece and scan it mm -hmm. and then print it. And it's it, an it, archival. An archival. Uh, yes. uh, yeah. Exactly. But I like, I really like uh, that one and this one yeah. <laughs> as, yeah. as a print. Uh, exactly. So it harks back to the other one, but. Exactly. There's those yeah. blues again. There's the blues again. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. And a final one. Oh yeah. This one I thought was just uh, so striking, and I I like it because it 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 had a bunch of elements of yours that you use. So oh, it's exactly. got the painting, the collage, the reference. No, was... it's true, and I th this is one of my favorites too. And it's exactly it's kind of. A little sampler of Tom Judd. It's got it's got the maps, it's got the wallpaper. You it's really need to subtitle that the sampler. The sampler. Yeah. But yeah, oh, I like it a lot. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So um I'm gonna switch gears. I got a couple yeah. of questions for you that I, you know, looking at your work made me think of. Uh, but this sure. is one that I ask a lot of the artists. Uh-huh. Uh do you remember what was your first exposure to art? Oh yeah, yeah. I do. Okay. I do. What was it? Well, I, um, I, I was happily living my childhood in Salt Lake City, Utah, hmm. and my parents moved us to Winneka, Illinois, for one year, hmm. and they put me in this school. And all I remember is that the concerned look on the, the all the. Uh, adults faces uh because i what my my test scores were not good and i just remember everybody was really concerned so i went from being this happy go lucky kid to this i'm you know there's something right. wrong with me right uh -huh. and i started i just remember sitting around drawing pictures of battleships with hundreds of little guns on them uh -huh. after, and the, everybody loved them all, all the kids loved them uh -huh. And I started getting this idea, like, you know, if all else fails, I can do this. And that yeah. was the first, that's the first time I thought of it. And really from then on, that became my thing. I mean, art became my thing. Yeah. So at what point did you decide, I mean, it, it was your thing and you did it, but at what point did you decide that you were going to be an artist? Like, when did you start really making art? High school, my senior my senior year in high school, I had a friend of mine who was older than me and he was doing it. He was he was a serious painter and he was kind of a mentor, but really a friend and a mentor. So he got, you know, we were we were always just talking about art and and doing it and thinking about it and and then as soon as I got out of high school, I signed up for the foundation program at the University of Utah. And that was it. From that moment on, I was hell bent on being an artist. Absolutely. There was nothing else I wanted. After I, I know the feeling. Yeah. yeah. It's like a pull, draw to it. So uh, when you when you make work now, and even when you first started, do you keep sketchbooks? Mm. Or how, how do you, do you just sort of work on the fly? Mm-hmm. I work on the fly. Um, I get an idea and it's usually my ideas are like, I can picture them as a series. Mm -hmm. So I'll get uh, like, I don't, I usually don't get, I usually don't get an idea for one painting. I usually mm -hmm. get an idea for a whole, a whole series of paintings. Mm -hmm. And um, it just kind of comes to me that way. It's not like I even, 
you know, I don't, I don't uh, try to do that. I just, it just ends up, that is just the way my mind works is it's always a series. A group right. of things. And um, what else did you ask me? I was just carrying if you like sketch, if you ever oh, used to yeah, sketch no. or even do you plan out your pictures? Is it not all too, in your head or? Not too much. I'll tell you what, I would say the closest thing I have to a sketchbook is my, the camera on my phone. I take mm. lots of pictures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of my process actually is taking pictures of stuff and then kind of putting them with other things. But the, the, I'm constantly taking pictures and that's sort of my sketchbook. Um, so when you, yeah. since you take your own or some of your resource material is your own uh, photographs, Right. Would you consider your works to be in some way autobiographical or do you do you think of them as separate? I think of them as separate, but they're also autobiographical in that it's all very much my worldview. It's all very much how I see the world. So in that respect, it's autobiographical. But I don't I wouldn't say it's literally biographical. Right. I don't, I'm not out to tell a story, really. I, I mean, I. It's okay with me if a story shows up. Mm -hmm. Don't start out with a story that I'm trying to illustrate or flesh out. It's it's more like I get in the middle of the painting and I go, gee, that reminds me of da 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 or such and such. But yeah. Anyway, so when yeah. you take you have your own photographs, but I also notice that there are a lot of other source huh. materials. So where do you where do you find it? Where do you get it? Do you go out hunting? What do you well, the, I, both. Yeah, I mean, the answer is yes and yes. Um, I collect other people's photographs, other people's vacation pho photographs or family photographs. Lo I love old family photographs. Mm. So I have, I either get them at, you know, uh, what do you call the fairs of the, um, you know. Flea markets like that? Flea markets. Yeah, get, get it, but I'll tell you a better source really is eBay. Oh, I mean, really? Oh, yeah. I, I write in um, family photographs, and you get people just because everybody dies and they have these boxes <laughs> of photographs. Literally, you can buy a box of photographs of the, people's families. Well, and, now you're going to have a hard time because everybody's going to rush to eBay and they're going to buy them all. So <laughs> that's a great story. I never would have thought of that. There's a ton of them, and and then I get I'll get the box, and then I'll go through them, and I'll and and usually and a lot of times I only end up with two or three out of a big box that I end up using. But there's always like yeah, a couple that are oh, just zingers. Yeah, where you just spent. Go, holy shit. Yeah. So when you're making your work, do you ever um, do you ever rework pieces after a while, or do you ever discard them? Do you ever just oh yeah you oh, quit? Uh, Give up, All burn them. <laughs> I don't burn them. I usually just paint over them mm -hmm. or cut them up. Yeah, um, and use them collage in a collage way. Yeah, um, I do. I do that. Um, I have stacks of cut up pictures, and uh -huh. I like I have these two big cardboard things on my desk, on my drawing table. And you open them and there's just all kinds of every <laughs> size and shape. And I I have a big 24 inch printer. Mm. So I take things and print them big mm. and then cut them up. And that's, yeah. I was gonna ask you about the size of that sculpture of the first one. Cause that was, yeah. that looked like it was a pretty big print from a photograph. So that's, that's from that's you. Of, yeah, that's one of the ones I printed and it's amazing. You can just print them up. They look great. Yeah. And, that's um, what a great resource and can imagine if really uh, is. You know, if there were printers you know 100 years ago with where we would be standing that'd be great i know so I know. And, and it was sort of by accident in that i got the printer with the idea of printing fine art prints and it turns out it just didn't have the quality and i thought oh crap but yeah. then i started playing with it and, and all of a sudden it became this like you said this huge resource for Right. For, for moving things around yeah you mentioned early so you you work in series and i was curious uh are they at one at a time series or do they have you, do they overlap at some point 
Um, I know sometimes, that. do you ever pick like end one and then maybe pick it up years later? How does that work for you? Yes. How does your mind work? <laughs> yes, yes to all those questions. Yes. Oh, okay. um, no, I, you know, a lot of times I'll work on a series for a while. I'll sort of get it to a point where I feel like I need to back off mm. to get some perspective, kind of put it aside, start doing other stuff. I've always got three or four things going. Mm -hmm. Always. It, Do you ever fun. consider anything closed? Like, all right, that's, that's enough of that. that. I do. And then something happens and time goes by. <laughs> but like, but like the architecture pieces, you know, the archaic future. Um, those pieces. Yeah, I haven't that that pretty much had a, a lifespan. And then it was kind of like, okay, I'm done with that. And I haven't done any sense. Um, but so yeah, there are certain ones where, where it just sort of runs its course. And then yeah, and then how I'm do done. you feel that your work from when you first started to now, how do you feel that that has changed over time? Oh, it's really changed a lot. It's really, really the approach yeah. or or well, I'll when, tell when you, you yeah. yeah, go ahead. Um yeah. I'll tell you it really, in fact, I'm doing a little book about it. Um mm. and, and I'm um uh, I'm I'm talking to some different folks about some kind of a mini retrospect from about 2000 on, or even maybe late 90s. No, pretty much the the, the, the term anyway, pretty much. I feel like my work changed after 9-11 mm -hmm. and it became much more topical, much more political, more edgy, more just about things I care about and a little less decorative and a little less that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it, and, and then when Donald Trump got elected, that even pushed it it's again. It kind of yeah. it again where I wanted to say stuff. With so there's where that it's it ties into autobiographical just a bit, a oh, little sure. bit. Yeah, sure. Right. And I, you know, and I, I felt like I had things to say. Yeah. I did a series of women with shooting guns, mm -hmm. you know, and and using these old sort of fifties movie star women mm -hmm. holding guns, and they were just pictures I found. I didn't even. You know, it was they're real pictures of just you know the, the, this culture of ours. You know, it's just you can go back and find a wash. Anybody, yeah. yeah, you can find anybody holding a gun in any picture. But they're I think they're very funny and they're very much about the election of Donald Trump. And it's it, it's it's kind of like um, women saying, "No, you you won't be grabbing my my pussy." <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I have this question that I've asked some artists. Previously, I put it away, but I pulled it out just for you because I, okay. your work made me think of it. Let's talk about color. Uh, color. Tell me what you think about color. Mm. What does color. color do? Yeah, yeah. I think it's a great question. This is the thing about color for me. I don't think about it very much. Now, that doesn't mean it's not important. Mm -hmm. but it's one of those things I have a natural gift for. In other words... I, I just think my sense of color is really interesting. It always has been, but I don't sit around and not that this is bad to do. I just don't. I don't sit around and analyze it. Mm -hmm. I don't beforehand. It, it's more like the blue. When we were talking about the blue. It's like, I like the blue, you know? Right. I like this weird uh, sort of slightly turquoisey blue. Mm -hmm. um, and I like kind of oranges a lot. And I like, and but but again, I don't, but, but the thing is, I was going to say, I don't really analyze, I don't do my work that way. My work, I don't, I don't think about things very long. I'm, 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 I remember Alex Katz said something like, I only get into trouble when I think about it. And that, yeah, yeah. I really feel strongly about that. I don't uh, do, I don't think about it. I don't analyze it. I sort of jump in and start trying stuff mm -hmm. and see where it goes. And in the same way with color. Like I'll just have a sense, like a sense, like, yeah, what we need is a big, big bunch of like orange. Right. You know, my guess is that you don't need to study color because you know color. That's what that's what I feel. And that, that's so funny. You say that. Go ahead. <laughs> finish, finish. And the, like the fact that 
you know, color can push people around. It can push their emotions. It can push their ideas. But I don't think I don't see you as somebody who needs to to focus on that because I think it just comes naturally to you. You know, hey, get away. So here's a color that's going to make you get away. You know what? It, that's brilliant. And, and I'll tell you why. It's so funny you're saying that because when I was in school, I had this class, color study. Uh-huh. And you, do, you do the Albers <laughs> things with, right, right. with color aid. And I just thought it was bullshit. <laughs> I, and, 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 and Boris Putman. Oh, yeah. Teacher, I had Boris. Right? Yep. And I gave him such a hard time. I, uh-huh. I just was, and in fact, I ran into him. I mean, he's he's passed on, but I ran into one day at, at Trader Joe's and I went to him and I said, God, Boris, I'm so sorry. I'm <laughs> such a jerk in your class. And he just laughed and he said, yeah, well, you, you kind of were, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted nothing to do with color study. I thought it was just hocus pocus, yeah. So a lot of artists throughout the years, you know, throughout the centuries have been just, you know, they've picked up color and they've just done great things with it. Are mm-hmm. there artists that you look at that you tend to go back to and, you know, to keep absorbing their work? Other artists that, I don't want to say influence, but artists that you're interested in always looking at their work? Not looking for that. Mm-hmm. Like I don't look, I'm never in a place where I am looking for ideas about colors or, or, or even looking for ideas for that matter. Um, but I can say I like the colors of people like Picasso and Philip Guston and where they take colors that shouldn't work. Right. They totally work like yeah. muddy pinks, muddy smudgy muddy stuff and mm-hmm. it's just gorgeous just gorgeous yeah i love gustin's line is oh shaky yeah. line there's no other way to describe it other than a human line right so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well i've got one last question for you sure. and this is my doozy question uh, i asked kiki the same question uh, um what does making art do for you what does it do for me well, I haven't really answered it. It it gives me uh, a way to express myself. That's it. I mean, and and that's what it's about. I don't. Um, I mean, and that's a just, big. That's a big answer. That's a huge one. That's it's how I express myself, and you know, it's fu- it's it's just the most exciting thing I can imagine doing. I mean, it's just enthralling, mm-hmm. really. I, I, you get yeah. itchy if you don't do it for a while. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, it's funny. I, I like. I'm not one of those people who has to do it all the time. In fact, I like not doing it for a while. Um, if I've been working a lot, mm. like taking time off because it gets it gets my batteries recharged. I get a fresh look. I get fresh ideas. I, I find that if I just go and go and go and go after a while. I don't burn out, but I kind of get stale. I'd say I, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, it's. I think it's a real good idea, at least for me, to kind of back off, take some time off every once in a while. Yeah, you're not the only artist I've spoken with that says that same thing. So yeah. I myself am doing it right now. So yeah. Well, Tom, I got to say it was a pleasure speaking oh, with you today. I mean, really? time goes by so quickly when I'm having fun. Uh, really? and maybe, you know, I, we'll do a part two, maybe, you know, in a year, yeah, I'll catch up with you see it. So that was really great. I want to thank everybody who uh, tuned in to watch Tom and I have a chat today. I want to make Sorry sure about that, the dog. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> we all have dogs. Okay. Uh, I want to make sure to remind you to please like and subscribe uh, the video. Uh, we really appreciate it. It helps keep us going and tune into future programs of Art Show. I've got a whole bunch of new artists lined up for this summer. So thanks again, Tom. I really Craig. appreciate it. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Craig. And thank everybody here who's watching. Thank you very much. Take care.